are back at another episode of Executive Conversations, where I talk to marketing leaders about how they get buy-in for the ideas that they have, how they explain strategy to other people who are involved and who might not understand everything that's going on and how they prove the value of the work that they have been doing. This has been such an interesting set of conversations that I've been having, a lot of overlapping themes, and also I'm learning uh, little nuggets from each and every person, which I think is super useful. Okay. Today, I'm speaking to Tobe Hernland, who is marketing team lead at Jobilan. Hi, Tobe. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm so happy to be here and uh, glad to be invited to, to speak with you today. Yeah, I'm really excited, that, particularly to speak to you. And as, as I was mentioning earlier, because you're a marketing team lead and uh, I've been speaking to people of different seniority levels, uh, mostly VPs of marketing, some CMOs. And I think it's really useful for a lot of our listeners who are in a similar role to you. And you just got a promotion as well. So you're moving up and so you're gaining these skills. And so being right there, in the moment, uh, I think it's really, really going to be useful to speak to how it's working out for you. So why don't you walk me through a little bit your career progression? And as I mentioned earlier, um, as marketers, when we're initially learning skills, we're like, okay, I need to learn how to run ads or do demand gen, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a point in our careers where we realize I have to actually learn how to sell internally. Um, in order for me to actually do these things. So could you walk me through your background there? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I think it's always, uh, it's difficult to pinpoint exactly when something kind of shifted or when you learn something in your career, because I think it's such a natural kind of progression to like realizing, oh, wait, maybe I need to do this. Maybe I start doing that. But for me, I think I was lucky enough to do both my bachelor's and my master's in marketing uh, and within that field. And for my master's in particular, um, we had to do a full business case uh, or like a business creating a business. So we did a business plan with all the aspects that's included in that as our master thesis. Uh, and for me, that meant working with a mentor who I selected myself, who had worked in a lot of different businesses before. So for me, I think that was the point where I was like, oh, wait, first of all, I need to sell her on what I want to do because she was not always um, approving of the things that I wanted to do or how I wanted to structure this. Uh, and then she was quite hard on me as well in terms of like, but this is not something that a business would approve of or this is not the budget you should be spending on this. So how can we work with that? So that kind of taught me without even being in the marketing position yet that, okay, people are going to have differing opinions. Uh, which, of course, we know that people have differing opinions, but you might not know that they might not always listen to you, they might not always understand. Uh, so building that kind of business case from the from the bottom up and really getting that kind of those harsh eyes on me in a non-work setting uh, really helps. So once I did start being in those roles and having to, to sell my view uh, or vision on something to someone else, uh, I was already prepared that they would probably shoot me down and have lots of questions. So, yeah. Wow. So you got really lucky to have that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I Ew. think so. We don't really get yeah. that. Well, I never studied marketing and I know a lot of marketers also never studied marketing. They just kind of started doing it. So now I see there's a lot of value if you find. But I think it's also, like and I don't mean to uh, to kind of, toot my own horn in that but the thing is we didn't have a demand that you had to have a, a mentor when you did this you could do it all by yourself uh, so I had had this uh, this teacher for another course or this professor uh, and I reached out to her we'd never met in person because the course was online but I loved her approach she was really harsh she was like she challenged me a lot during that course and it made me better so I reached out to her and I asked her would you be interested in mentoring me? And I think for me, that's also a learning that I kind of encourage everybody, no matter where you start out, is just to kind of seek that out and seek out a mentor that isn't just a cheerleader, but somebody who actually challenges you. Because I think that's the, the best way for, for us to grow as humans, right? To just be challenged. Yeah, I love this. Great attitude, 
very useful in your career. So you already kind of knew from getting out of university, okay, I'm going to have to build business cases for this. I'm going to have to actually make <laughs> sense of my ideas uh, to uh, people who have no idea what it is, what marketing is, or maybe not no idea, but some idea, some idea, but not as much idea <laughs> as you. <laughs> exactly. Just expect the worst. I think that's, yeah. uh, that's the learning. <laughs> So you mentioned that you have a great leadership team, their understanding of your ideas. Can you talk to me about a challenge either at Jobilon or another place that you've been at? Um, what, when have you faced challenges trying to get your idea across the line? And what did you do I mean, over that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really great question. And smaller challenges face all the time right but I think one that a lot of us are facing and it doesn't matter what the market is like but there's always this kind of want and need to slash the marketing budget and then you of course have to argue for your sake and you have to sell your ideas and you have to choose which ones you focus on and I think that's one of the biggest the biggest challenges that we've had at least at least where I'm at right now this year the marketing budget was really slashed it was for good reason completely valid reasons behind it it's very understandable but it does put you in a position where you have to prioritize and it's not maybe i think one of the most difficult parts is explaining why you're prioritizing the way you do because of the roi and like proving the roi of what you're doing right so if you have something that has been working kind of well then it's easy to get buy-in for it. But the thing is, if you don't have the resources to spend on that, it's one, not going to continue working kind of well. Uh, and if you don't spend more on it, I mean, even if you just spend a little bit more on it, maybe it could give you double the results. You don't have to spend double the money, but it might give you double the results. So then it's also, I always find it difficult to f strike that balance where like, I want us to try new things. I know that historically, that's where we get results. We dare to be different. We dare to try things. We need to work in different ways to to figure out what actually works for us. But it would be so much easier to just look at historical data on what has worked and just do the exact same thing for the upcoming year. Uh, that's not what I want to do. That's not what I think we should do. So that kind of puts me right away in a position of like, so what do we prioritize and how do I actually sell that we need to prioritize this? Uh, but then again, that's where a good management team who actually listens to you comes in, where you can actually say, hey, I know this has worked, but for this, this and this reason, I don't think it's going to work anymore. Uh, and the way we sell, this is how we sell. This is historically how we have sold. What if we try this strategy instead? Uh, but then, of course, for me, it's been all about minimizing the, the actual resources spent on this so we can spend time on it but can we spend money probably not yeah. so then you have to just find creative ways around it um, but I think that's consistently been my challenge both in this job and previous jobs where it's yeah yeah when you say trying new things do you mean new things that have been proven at other companies like hey we should try SEO or trying like brand new ideas where like nobody's ever done this before, but listen, here's my idea. <laughs> I uh, more towards the second part. I think in, in my case, I've worked at companies that have kind of the basics in place, or at least I've been a part of putting the basics in place. So there is already SEO that's working. There is already, you know, certain parts that are, you know, we're continuously working on, but the basics are in place. So we're not starting from scratch. We don't have to. And then it would be really easy to also look at, okay, but they're doing this. Shouldn't we also do that? Oh, and we're, I mean, I'm in the B2B space. We're a talent acquisition platform. There's a lot of talent acquisition platforms out there. I would argue we're the best one, but you know, it depends <laughs> on who you ask. Uh, but in that case, you know, you're, you're in a battlefield where a lot of people are doing the same thing. So there are a lot of good customer cases. There are a lot of good, you know, different types of social proof. There's a lot of good product marketing. I mean, those are all aspects where you can be creative within those fields, but it's not necessarily going to be something that stands out because very few companies have kind of the guts to actually do something that stands out. But in our case, one very clear example, which I love to share because I think it's really fun, is that our CEO, before I came on uh, to the team, but our CEO a couple of years back, he decided to hire 
a videographer full time. So he had only been freelancing, which is quite normal, right? He came in to do customer cases and things like that. Uh, but he actually decided to hire him full time because then we had more use of him and he could actually spend his time, you know, working on things that we knew we needed. It could be product videos, but it could also be, you know, working with customers to, to help them with video needs that they have, maybe use him as kind of a service of some sort. For the marketing team, I mean, this has meant that we have kind of a creative genius that goes way outside of any marketing rules that we can set up. So when he started pitching that he wanted to do like a, a video trailer for reports that we were releasing, I mean, imagine a standard like we're releasing a report. It has a lot of facts in it. It's good. It's going to be read. We're, we're really proud of it. But the marketing of that would be quite similar to what other companies are doing. And he was like, what if we do something funny? You know, what if we do something that's really entertaining? You know, we create a trailer, we we make it unexpected, we get people to really be sucked in. And the thing is, he's also an actor, so he's used to like, how do you think about things? You know, who should be where? What should be happening? So he pitched this idea. And we, of course, internally, there was yes and nays. Uh, but eventually we approved and he, he was doing it and we recorded it. It was all internal people acting. <laughs> so that's also a challenge. Uh, but it was such a success. It was really funny. It was unexpected. People started commenting. It's probably the biggest, like, to, to up to that date, social media impact that we've had. And as a company, it's kind of hard to break through the noise, right? But after we did this once, now we've dared to do it more times and we've dared to do it in more crazy ways. So the last, the last thing we released was about a, a month ago, we had an event on Responsible AI and we decided to do a trailer for an event because we were like, why not? We've, we've tried this now, it works. Uh, and we decided to do what became actually an eight minute short film, <laughs> which wasn't the, the point, but it just happened. It was fun. We were like, you know what? Let's try it out. If it doesn't get results, I mean, it's kind of understandable. It's an eight minute video that we're releasing on social media, but we got so much spread and we're kind of already seeing at least brand awareness ROI because we've been to events where prospects have come up and said, hey, I saw your video. This is excellent. I recognize your brand from the video. And that's amazing. I mean, we're, we're obviously breaking through the noise. We're obviously making an impact. And then you know, down the line, hopefully we can prove that this is giving actual ROI in terms of signed business. But for now, at least it's, it's proving really valuable. And it was a bet that I don't think many companies would be making in this space, honestly. Oh my God. I love this. I love this story. It's been my dream. Sorry to hire for it being so long. <laughs> no, it's so good. It's so good. Um, so are, so are you guys remote or are you in office? uh we're both we're remote friendly though so we have colleagues kind of all over okay and they hired this guy full-time in office or also just kind of all over the he's place. he's both but he is i mean he is uh in in stockholm where we have our main office uh but he is he works remote as well with in terms of editing and things like that i mean there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff but yes this is such a good story and example and we all <laughs> wish that we had a funny camp, a funny video guy. On our yeah, team. I mean, it's it's definitely once once we saw the first success, then it was like then it's easy to sell it, right? Again, going to to proving some sort of results as as well. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of the tricky part, where I guess it's pretty obvious. Like you said, there are brand signals where people say, "Hey, I saw your video. That was awesome." Probably a lot more traffic to the page, a lot of downloads of the report. Um, what do you think leadership is? looking to see if they were to keep doing these kind of things and investing time in that? I mean, I think definitely for now, this is something that's really cost efficient for us. So, uh, I mean, because we have the staff members to do it, but of course then it takes, it does take time and it does take time from, from the people internally who act in this as well, but it also kind of contributes to the culture of our company. Uh, so you could always see it from that perspective as well. Um, but I think definitely they're looking for real return on investment in terms of like, do we get deals signed from this? Like, is there a way to prove that this has influenced people to actually choose us? Uh, which I think like the first signals are 
by Avidan Primer, right? People are seeing this and they're thinking, oh my God, this is a company we need to talk to, uh, which obviously is the first the first yeah. step to actually signing deals, right? So I think that would be the per- in a perfect world. But then again, I'm always uh, fighting to kind of remind people that this is a, this is a long, <laughs> it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? Okay. So we need to, we need to think yes. a different way. So do you work directly with this videographer? Is he reporting to you? He's not reporting to me. He's kind of uh, an individual contributor uh, at the moment. But yes, I I work a lot together with him. So can you walk me through, are there any situations? So this was, sorry, when he came in, you said the CEO decided to hire him full time. Yes. So it was his idea. Yes, and I think I mean I don't want to put uh, put words into into his mouth in terms of saying what his reasoning were, but I think I think the reasoning were that if we want to create really top tier um, in terms of like product marketing, in terms of videos, customer videos, and things like that, he saw that you know what we might as well have him full time. I'm sure there's other ways that we can use this. Uh, so it's really, but I mean he is a very forward thinking uh, CEO, I would say. Uh, so that's that's very beneficial for uh, the rest of us who want to be creative. Definitely. I mean, it sounds like you're in a great environment to nurture creativity and to come up with cool ideas. Uh, is there anything that you have pitched that has been vetoed? Good question. I actually don't think so. I think uh, this is going to sound uh, counterintuitive from what I just said, but I think I'm the one <laughs> doing things okay. uh, because I have, uh, I mean, certain bets have been done in previous companies where I know that this hasn't worked out or this has been a difficult market, uh, especially when it comes to go to market, like strategy overall, uh, then it's less on the creative side, but more so like, should we do this? Should we focus on this country? I think I tend to be more realistic when it comes to those type of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't think I've had any of my ideas fully vetoed. I think uh, I find a way to manipulate my way around yes. it, if that's the case. If the initial no is a no, or the initial answer is no. Well, it sounds like you probably come really prepared with data and when you're pitching your ideas. I think you have to. Otherwise, yeah. you're setting yourself up for, for failure. Yeah, you're not just like, hey, should we do this? Oh, I just think no. I mean, it, it depends on who you're talking to, you yeah. know, but yes. Do you have any framework that you follow or methodology for pitching an idea? No, I think I honestly, what I've learned over time, sometimes I've also been over prepared. And I think that's something that uh, you also learn with just you know, rolling with the punches. In my organization, I would say it's very flat in terms of conversations, in terms of tone of voice. I never have to feel like I have to talk up to someone or feel like I have to be, you know, in a certain position like that when I'm pitching something. But I do think what I've learned over time is to just kind of try to condense myself as much as possible. So more so, this is the idea I want to do. This is why I want to do it. He's, here's the facts of why I think it would work. Uh, and this is how much it's going to take from our budget that isn't already allocated here. Uh, so in terms of like, cause I have budget ownership. So for me to move money around, that's one thing, but if I would need something outside of that, obviously then it's a different story. And of course, even moving things sometimes can be like, Ooh, but shouldn't we focus on this instead? Um, so I think for me kind of condensing it into the most critical facts, but then also having really solid and data to back me up like why especially why would this work for us uh, as a company because it might also be that this actually hasn't worked for our competitors but this is why i think it would work for us uh which of course is a harder sell right but sometimes it's also about brand positioning and who do we actually want to reach like we as a company the company i'm currently at we're focusing a lot on on enterprise customers and like larger employers that's vastly different in terms of recruitment, which is what we handle, right? Then if you're working with small scale, early stage startup companies, they're super innovative. They want to work fast. They can do everything themselves and they want to. That's not our target customers. So if we start talking too much or pushing too much towards that area, we're kind of alienating our ICP, which is doesn't work, right? So we have to adjust to 
not do the same things as our competitors do because if they're not targeting the same icp why are we doing the same thing that they're doing you know so we have to yeah just think a little bit differently and then maybe sometimes pitch things that yeah successfully or hasn't been successful for other people but could be successfully uh, successful for us so what kind of data do you collect to pitch this kind of thing like how do you know it's not successful for your competitors first of all and then what kind of data do you collect to show that it would be successful for you I mean, that's a really, a really good question. I think it varies depending on what it is. Uh, and I don't think I'm able to give a very clear example on this without revealing too much about how we work. Uh, but I definitely think that when it comes to uh, gathering data, just talking to peers in the industry helps a lot. And it doesn't have to be on the level of, you know, what exactly is your marketing strategy? Nobody's going to answer that to a competitor, but having good relationships with other people in the same industry for me, I've been in the HR tech industry now since 2019. So, I mean, it's a solid time frame where I built up a network of people who I trust and who share information with me, uh, not to the company secrets level where I know everything that's going on, but I do understand what works and what doesn't. So even if the data isn't necessarily available, I'm still able to gather insights on, okay, but they tried this. They're similar to us. They might not be exactly the same, but they're similar to us. They tried this and they were not successful in this market. This is why it was difficult. This is why I think we shouldn't or should go this route. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say the power of kind of building that network and yeah. peers, even in the same level as you, even when you're a junior, you still have a lot of input. You still have a lot of insights to share from what you've tried and not tried, even if you weren't maybe the biggest part of the process, you know. Yeah. Network is so powerful. I've had the same experience as you, Tove. We're just networking like crazy and that is helping me understand what's working and what's not working. I'm friends with all mm. of my direct competitors and we actually have masterminds together and share, you know, obviously to a certain limit, but share a lot of things that people wouldn't think that competitors would share with each other. And it's been really helpful for all of us, I think. Yeah. I mean that's a that's an amazing example of being able to actually collaborate across cross competitors. Yeah. Um amazing. Tove, I think this feels like a good place to wrap it up. Um mm -hmm. I will leave your LinkedIn post, your LinkedIn profile in the show notes. Is there anywhere else you would like me to direct the audience to? I mean uh, that's a good question. Uh, you should definitely, if you're in need of a, an applicant tracking system, you know where to turn to. But I think uh, for for my sake, myself, I think uh, my LinkedIn uh, is probably the best. And I'd love to continue the conversation and, and creating some sort of a continued network that way as well. So, uh, so I think that's probably the best way to go. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And for those listening or watching, Please remember to give this a like, give it a like right now <laughs> and uh, please subscribe and share and we will see you in the next executive conversations. Thank you.